Hi, uh, welcome to the example video for accuracy, precision, consistency, and errors, uncertainty. Alright, so as you can see, you can find this uh, in your OneNote. Alright, depending on which class you are, if you can't find it at the correct week, get in touch with me, okay? So in this uh, video, I will run you through the general definitions and then we will just jump straight into questions. So accuracy, as previously in the video, is how close a measured value is to the true value. Precision would be the size of the smallest division. Micrometer is more precise than a vernier caliper. Vernier caliper is more precise than a meter rule. All right, and consistency here is the ability of the instrument to have similar repeated readings. So you always hit the bullseye at the same spot, but you might not be hitting it at the right spot, so to speak. Okay, and uncertainty or error is the difference between the measured value and the true value. I'm going to bookmark the, uh, the concept of error or uncertainties because we're going to go quite deep into this in the next lecture video. All right, so here... I'm going to uh, compare uh, systematic and random errors or random uncertainties. So systematic errors right, are readings that are always larger or smaller than the true reading by a constant amount. Okay, Whereas random error is random. Ah. So sometimes you get bigger reading, sometimes you get smaller reading. You don't know. Okay, Examples for systematic errors are like zero errors and incorrect calibration of your device. Example of random errors are like parallax error or human error. Lah. You do the experiment wrong, someone sneezes, etc. Et so for systematic error, you can reduce by taking mean values. Sorry, cannot be reduced by taking mean values because your systematic error means you are already wrong. Systematically wrong. You're not wrong because of randomness. But you can reduce randomness by taking mean values. So how do you improve a systematic error? Recalibrate the instrument or check for zero error and subtract from the real value. Alright, so let's jump into some past years. Okay, this is in page 3. It's uh, May, June 12, paper 1-2. Okay, so wow, a lot of text. Let's read together. A mass is dropped from rest and falls through a distance of 2 meters in a vacuum. Okay, sure. An observer records the time taken for the mass to fall through this distance using a manually operated stopwatch and repeats the measurement a further 2 times. Okay. Average result of this measured time, so he measured it three times, la, are displayed in the table below and was used to determine the value of the acceleration of free fall. This was calculated to be 9.8 meter per second. So in this question, right, he basically did an experiment, a kinematics experiment, to calculate the value of the gravitation of free fall. So the value of gravitational acceleration, right, is around 10. Actually, it's 9.81, but let's say you don't know, let's say it's around 10. This is confirm accurate. So this shows that the reading is accurate. Okay. So now if it's accurate, then you look at your average value is 6.4. You notice that you have values that are smaller than 6.4 and values that are larger than 6.4. Meaning uh, the error is random. Does that make sense? Your mean value is here, 0 0.64. You got larger than 0 0.64, 0 0.73. You got smaller than 0 0.64, 0 0.49. Okay, so it's definitely accurate. There's definitely random error. But at the same time, it doesn't feel very consistent to me. When I say consistent, I mean... You look at the difference between the largest and the smallest value. Quite big, leh. all right? So let's read and decide. The measurements are precise and accurate with no evidence of random error. Of course, this one is wrong. Law. You can see there's bigger and smaller than average value. Measurements are not accurate. No, uh, it is accurate. Okay, measurements, see, measurements are not always recorded to the degree of precision of the measuring device, but are accurate. Correct. Okay, so this part here is correct. You know why? Because uh, if you look at your reading, oh, two decimal point, 
two decimal point nani one decimal point wrong liao la in paper three you do this so this one should have been recorded so this part is correct systematic error may be present this part is don't know maybe probably not possibly not highly like highly unlikely all right so the range of d the range of results shows that there were random error made yes yes definitely but the calculated value is correct so the experiment was successful yes this one is correct all right the systematic error is probably not there because our average value gives us an accurate reading okay eh? so this is how you judge so you need to understand the nature of all the terms that we mentioned before okay next question okay now let's look at this question it's from page four um on 12 paper one two now question six variable x and y are related by the equation y is equal to p minus qx where p and q are constant and you measure x and y experimentally sure result contains a systematic error okay a systematic error means that your entire graph is shifted up or down than the true value so if you look at this equation y is equal to p minus qx i'm going to rearrange uh, so this will be negative qx plus p okay so if you use uh, the equation of a straight line the general equation of a straight line this is y because you compare with y equal to mx plus c ma. so the gradient m must be equal to negative q okay and the y-intercept c must be equal to p all right so you can see for option b the line indeed passes through p so this does not represent the result this one you can see right it is below p so maybe all right let's check the other options first uh, option good lord do you think you will get a curve no right okay so no curve because uh, we are plotting y against x all right so the answer here would be a now what is this one this one is probably accurate okay but not consistent okay this reading is consistent but not accurate what causes a decrease in accuracy? Nah, systematic error. Okay. What causes an inconsistent reading? I don't know. Need to see the person doing the experiment. Alright, because it's got a random, random one. Ma. Moving on. Okay, the next example is from ON13, paper 13. This is uh, in page 6 of your notes. So here you can find a calibrated meter q and an uncalibrated meter p okay so it says here that an uncalibrated analog voltmeter p uh, is in parallel with another voltmeter q which is known to be accurately calibrated so because they are in parallel if you remember roughly your circuit right it means that the reading for voltmeter p must be equal to the reading of voltmeter q lah. okay for the range of potential difference readings from a two meter this is the calibration graph okay the graph shows that P has zero error. How do I know? Because um, when the reading is supposed to be zero for both ends, it is not like it doesn't pass through the origin. When the meter is recalibrated, the gradient of the calibration graph is found to be unchanged. Fine. What is the new scale reading on meter P when it is used to measure a potential difference of 5 volts okay so right now we need to do some uh, manipulation on the graph and by adjusting i mean moving the line ah. okay so if you have a ruler this is easier to do but i ain't got no ruler so i'm just going to copy the line and then transfer it and i will try my best to maintain the same gradient ah. Okay, limited by my mouse. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so when I say move, it means that um, I need to eliminate the zero error. So the line has to pass through the origin like this. Okay, 
pass through the origin so that the zero error is eliminated. Okay, now it says that your reading is uh, 5 volt. So it is correct on the calibrated meter Q. La. So what you're going to do is you're going to take 5 volt from the meter Q, which I will do so now. 5 is here. You can see this is 5. So go all the way up to the calibrated line, the new line here. Nah. Okay, this is the new line. And I'm going to extrapolate and see what this value is. Dun, 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 dun. So this is uh, seven, 7 and 2 boxes. So this is 7.4. Where's my pen? Right, so this is one would be 7.4. Okay, so this so called calibration curve, right, allows you to understand that when you see 7.4 volt on meter P, it means that the actual reading is 5. Yeah, la, the meter P cha cha leo, cha cha means got problem. Okay, so uh, something is wrong with the meter P, don't know what that is, but a calibration curve will allow you to adjust. Okay, so it's a bit like saying that, oh, if I see 7.4 volt on meter P, I will get 5, the actual reading is 5 volt. And so on and so forth. Lah. We can extrapolate using the new uh, recalibrated line. This one is adjusting for zero error. Okay, just because I can adjust for zero error doesn't mean I can adjust for all the errors. So there's obviously some other error here. Okay, so anyway, the answer is 7.4. All right, let's try one last example. All right, this one is in page 7, okay, ON14, paper 1-3. In this circuit, there's an analog meter that is recalibrated as a thermometer, wonderful. The graph shows how resistance of the thermistor change. Okay, now this is the thermistor. Lah. Look, there are only three things in the circuit. You can deduce which one is the thermistor, okay? Okay, so the thermistor changes with temperature T. All right. Which diagram could represent the temperature scale on the emitter? Okay, so now we need to look at change, all right? So you can see, right, when the temperature is low, so you can see when T is small, the resistance drops quickly or rapidly or very fast. Now this part here. Wow, drops so fast, uh, this part here. So if it drops very fast, right, it means that the meter will deflect a lot so r drops fast then there will be more deflection per degree celsius law so when the temperature is smaller you will have more deflection let me zoom in for you for example if you look at a this one maybe because small temperature wow large deflection this one tiny deflection cannot last so this is wrong okay B, le mao, cannot lo. Ayo, D like that, A like that, G, G, which one to take? Does it matter whether it's left or right? Well, if you check and see, right, <laughs> you can see here that R will drop quickly. So if R drops quickly, right, what happened to your current? Basically, when T is, I mean, I think we're going to decrease when T is small. The next thing you need to know when T is small is that um, this resistance is still fairly high. So your I is small but increase quickly. So if your current is small, your deflection should be on the left, lah, not on the right. Ah, very weird, right? Because right is maximum deflection now, unless you design some weird emitter. Lah. So the answer is A. Okay, so that is that. Um, I think there's no more examples. If I do everything already, then which one are you going to do? So you try some lah, like this one and this one. Okay, I'll give you some work to do in class. But generally, that's all for calibration. Okay, learn to use the calibration curve. And I will see you in the last video of this topic where we talk about identities of uncertainty and we do some hardcore calculation. Alright, that is all. Bye-bye.